U.S. Raytheon tests ground-launched GBU-53B Stormbreaker bomb for all-weather moving target strikes. That single line hides a lot. A 50-day sprint from design to live fire, a prototype rocketing to roughly 20,000 feet, and a clear signal that precision, networked munitions are being pushed down from the skies to the ground forces with urgency. If this concept pans out, it reshapes how battalions think about striking transient targets when weather, smoke, or electronic attack would otherwise blunt their effects. Raytheon announced on September 24, 2025, that a ground-launched prototype of the GBU-53B, commonly known as Stormbreaker, had been fired at a private Mojave Desert range. Company footage traces the event back to March 22, 2025, and the program drove a concept to test in roughly 50 days. Engineers used a commercial off-the-shelf rocket motor to boost the weapon from zero speed and altitude up to about 6,000 meters, roughly 20,000 feet. Once at speed and altitude, the weapon behaved much like its air-released sibling. Wings deploy, guidance takes over, and the tri-mode seeker goes to work. Technically, Stormbreaker sits in the roughly 200 to 250 pound class, with about half that mass in a multi-effects warhead designed to provide penetration, fragmentation, and blast against vehicles, light structures, and small craft. The body is compact, on the order of 5.75 feet long, with a 5.6 foot wingspan and a diameter near 7 inches. And it carries a sensor package that matters more than raw mass. GPS and INS navigation are hardened against jamming and paired with a tri-mode seeker imaging infrared, millimeter wave radar, and semi-active laser. That sensor fusion is the whole point. The weapon can track a moving truck through rain, smoke, and fog, and still accept a laser terminal queue when available. Networking features, Link 16 and UHF connectivity, and in-flight retargeting allow handoff among platforms and sensors, matching current joint all-domain command and control thinking. Converting a glide bomb to a ground launch system is not trivial but it's conceptually simple. Add initial propulsion, accelerate to a glide-ready state, then let the proven airframe and seeker finish the intercept. The prototype used a commercial booster to accomplish that, mirroring earlier efforts, such as the GLSDB, which married a small diameter bomb to an M26 rocket motor. GLSDB's boost and glide approach produced extended range versus pure airdrop munitions. Stormbreaker's advantage is the seeker and networking. Published air release figures put Stormbreaker at standoff ranges around 46 miles under high altitude drops, while GLSDB type combos are often quoted at extended ranges depending on conditions. Raytheon hasn't published a ground launch range for this variant, and that matters because launcher angle, boost profile, and environmental conditions will dramatically change the envelope. Tactically, a ground launch Stormbreaker fills a gap between rockets, tube artillery, and heavier missiles. It gives a small launcher, truck-mounted or containerized, the ability to fire precision salvos at moving columns or maritime targets beyond visual range, day or night, through weather and under GPS degradation. Imagine a forward unit firing and then letting the seeker and networked sensors sort which vehicles in the convoy to engage. A drone, a ship radar, or another aircraft could cue the weapon, and a command node could reassign intercepts in flight. That flexibility complements rather than replaces existing fires. Stormbreaker is optimized for fleeting or cluttered targets where larger missiles are overkill and unguided munitions would miss. There are operational trade-offs. The seeker and networking make the weapon resilient in contested electromagnetic environments, but the launcher form factor, magazine depth, reload rates, and cost per round will determine how broadly armies adopt it. If the ground variant keeps maximum commonality with the air-launched version, Logistics and training will be simpler for forces already operating Stormbreaker on F-15Es and, in time, F-35s, configurations that may allow dense salvos. The air plans mention internal and external carriage possibilities up to multiple weapons. Still, budgets and doctrine drive procurement. Armies are cautious about introducing precision munitions that require maintenance-intensive sensors or that are priced closer to guided missiles than rockets. There's also a survivability and employment calculus. A launcher firing precision glide munitions will attract counter-battery fire and interdiction. To be tactically useful, it needs to operate as a shoot-and-scoot asset, leveraging concealment and dispersed basing. 
the reduced emissions after launch, because the seeker can finish the intercept using passive modes and radar imaging, helps. In an environment of layered air defenses and strong electronic warfare, a ground-launched, sensor-rich glide weapon provides a discrete way to impose effects without exposing large fixed launchers. This is a logical and important evolution. Reusing a proven sensor and guidance package reduces development risk, and the rapid design to test timeline shows the engineering payoff of modular commonality. The real questions that will decide whether this becomes a tactically transformative capability are practical. What effective range will fielded launchers achieve? How many rounds can a vehicle carry and fire in a salvo? What will a single round cost? And how well will the seeker and network perform under the kind of jamming and deception seen on modern battlefields? If Raytheon's follow-on testing in 2025 clarifies those points and demonstrates reliable seeker handover, the ground-launched Stormbreaker could become a potent option in battalion and brigade-level shaping fires, not to replace artillery or missiles, but to give small units the precision reach to engage fleeting, high-value targets when weather and jamming would otherwise deny them effect.